Clouds are constantly on the move, and I can spend hours looking at the sky and the ever-changing cloud formations. There's something very special about painting skies. They can be the whole landscape or the complement to a landscape painting. When we first start to paint clouds and really study them, the learning curve will be lessened. So don't be afraid of painting them and understand that if this is your first time painting clouds, they may look childish, but that's okay. Every cloud you paint will get better and better over time, so don't lose heart. When you look at a photo of the sky or simply go outside and look at clouds, we tend to think of them as being white, and I think we've all done this. We've all painted our clouds white. But remember, they truly are the lightest value in the sky, but they do contain a spectrum of hues. So remember that nothing is truly white in the sky, and everything in nature is influenced by the color of light. So when you start painting your clouds, I'm going to start with the very first brush here, which is called the Azure Blender. And this is a blending brush, and you will want to use it to basically soften edges. And it's a very kind of uh, flowing type of brush, and it would be anywhere where you were looking to, um, you know, maybe soften an edge. It's also very uh, nice to have these hard and soft edges, but it's also nice to fade those edges out on one side, which gives the cloud more atmospheric uh, conditions around it. So uh, use this brush very softly, very, very, uh, very, very um, soft uh, pressure on the brush, and I think you'll really enjoy the way it softens edges for you. The next brush is called Cloud Puff, and this one, again, we're going to sample this um, uh, color right here in this cloud. And notice that it isn't pure white. It's a little bit off um, and a little warmer. And I might even pull it over just a wee bit further. And I use this brush, um, use it with firm pressure to get lots of saturation coming through and soft pressure to just flow the edges out and create a very soft, ethereal look to the cloud. Use your Alt key to sample color as you're starting to build some of these cloud forms. And uh, I think what you'll end up doing and liking much better is that you have a, a lot of color variability going on uh, in your clouds. And again, uh, refrain from going to white and use colors that you see within uh, the photo that you're using perhaps as a reference or even from your imagination. Just try and keep uh, working with those soft, soft edges and those nice um, colors that you see within the image. And I've already started on this painting, so I have a lot of color that I can pick up and use. Um, so I'm taking advantage of that and using my Alt key as I go through here to sample those colors. That's the Cloud Puff, puff brush. The next cloud uh, brush is called Distant Clouds, and this one you can use at different sizes. Um, it is real nice for just creating that look of distant clouds and, you know, way back in the distance. And again, I, I can pick up colors that I see in the painting and apply those. And it's just a nice brush. Remember also that on a reset setting, if I take the reset to zero and the bleed up to 100%, I can use that brush to blend with too. So you can get some nice soft edges if you need. The next brush is called Ethereal Blender. And this one again is, is just a very, very nice soft edgy blender. And I like using it um, on some of my existing clouds just to change the shape, form, or the edge of the cloud. I can bring the reset up on this brush, sample a color, and use it to create 
clouds as well. Going back to the default, and I can use it to soften and blend. The next brush we're going to look at is called Feathery White. And um, I love this brush uh, just for creating, um, you know, very, very soft cloud formations. With Reset Up, I can paint. And look, I've gotten pretty white with those clouds, so I think I might want to tone that down a little bit. And then when I take the reset down to 0%, I can do some very, very soft blending. And the blending is nice because it you can use it to kind of work into the area of the painting that you want to establish some clouds in. Tend to keep everything a little bit softer on the edges and a little more detail toward the center of interest. The next brush is Mayor's Tail and this one I love using uh, just to create these nice broad brush strokes and to change the direction of the clouds a little bit. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, having different levels of clouds and different directions going on in your clouds makes for a much more interesting painting. And so you can take advantage of that by using the Mare's Tail brush. Uh, this brush is called Nebulous. And this is a good example of how the Nebulous brush can work for you. Um, I use it a lot with cloud formations such as you see here. I also use it to create waves or um, flowing rivers or waterfalls. So it's wonderful for uh, those, those ways of working. Um, when I sample color, you know, I may want to go maybe over to a pink shade here and use something in the pink. And when I start to paint in on the layer, Let's make sure with the brushes it has some color to it. And so with firm pressure, you can see that I get a lot of this flying out of the brush stroke. And then soft pressure, you get a very small brush point, very small dab coming out. And then again, if you set your reset to zero, you can use it to blend. And you may want to have this combination of these hard and soft edges, which gives a beautiful effect. Just remember that pressure and the application of pressure to your stylus is important with this brush. The next brush is called Puffy Fairweather. And um, again, I'm going to use this brush by just sampling some of the colors that I see in my painting. And you can see that this is kind of an abstract brush. It creates these really nice, uh, what I call constable clouds. They're very abstract shapes, and um, I think you'll enjoy working with this brush. This is one of my favorites in the set. So lots of these nice uh, edgy effects. Um, and then a good way to kind of build up big uh, thunderhead type uh, clouds. And that one is called Puffy Fair Weather. This brush is called Soft Horizon and it's used to create a atmospheric perspective uh, along the horizon line and really works nicely to push elements into the distance to give that feeling of uh, atmospheric perspective. This brush is called Storm Clouds and um, again I use it mainly with darker colors and it's a nice brush for for using on the back side of some of your lighter clouds to build up shape and form but you can get very creative and use it with just about any way you'd like. 
Use that Alt key to sample colors as you're working through it um, to develop some of the, the backsides of clouds, those beautiful violets and purples that you see. And just dab it just to create interesting soft cloud shapes. Thunderhead Building is another cloud brush uh, that you can use to build up the shape of uh, large thunderheads. Um, I use it a lot as with my alt key to sample colors within the painting and to build up uh, areas of clouds. Really lovely for creating shape in your clouds and softening edges. This brush is called Thunderheads. Again, this brush has a reset setting and you can control the saturation of that brush stroke by working with the reset setting and the bleed setting and the opacity. Again, these are beautiful, beautiful drip brushes that um, create these wonderful, wonderful, soft, lovely edges as you create clouds. Um, this one is one of my favorites, the Thunderhead brush, and I use it to build up the shape of Thunderheads. Edges can be softened with the reset setting and the bleed setting. And again, because this is a drip-based brush, um, you'll want to work and adjust the strength of the brush effect. You can go all the way up to 100% where you get a very, very strong uh, effect. And th this is actually one of my favorite effects for this brush by working with the strength setting up uh, relatively high because it really creates these beautiful uh, thunderhead shapes. So this is ideally the way to work with this brush to get that uh, those big uh, thunderhead um, edges and shape going. Okay, the next brush is called Velvety Blender. And this is a blending brush. And again, you can use it to just soften edges. And perhaps if your thunderheads need a little softening on the edges, you can go on the back side and just do a little soft blending. Blending is great, but don't overdo it either um, because you'll lose some of the effect if you overblend. And finally, the last brush is called Wispy. And this one I'm going to pick up some of these nice, I'm going to go to more of a pink color here, nice and bright, and just lay that one very, very gently, very softly, light, light pressure, and use it just to create the look of wispy clouds on the horizon, perhaps in a sunset scene. Um, I also use it to flatten sometimes some of the bottoms of clouds. You can use it also very effectively to show those little wispy edges that come out from the edges of clouds. So I hope you'll enjoy working with these beautiful cloud brushes and um, the landscapes that you'll create using these brushes will have a huge impact on um, your paintings. Remember to stay away from working with pure white and work with some of those values that you see up towards the top, but try and stay away from the pure white. If you've established a painting, use your Alt key to sample colors and then work within that cool and warm range up at the top 
of uh, your color wheel. So I hope you enjoy these and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.